There we go. <laughs> Welcome to Love and Arms, everyone. I'm the executive um, director, Chartrina White. Thank you so much for joining us in celebration of five years of spreading Ahimsa nonviolence to executive, all the um, director, Chartrina White. Thank you. We'll get rid of that extra sound there. <laughs> Spreading Ahimsa and nonviolence to all beings through compassion. Supported by our four pillars of connection, education, inspiration, and action. On this day and every day, I hope you're inspired to do what you can to create a better world. I hope you learn a way in which you can do just that. And I hope you feel more closely connected to all of our residents, all beings, and to the mission of Love and Arms. It's only with your help that we can create a more compassionate world. You can support Love and Arms, all of our residents, compassionate businesses, artists, and caring individuals by registering for our fifth annual gala. So many people have generously given of their money, time, and talent so that everyone can become involved in the mission of Love and Arms. So please go there and register. Make sure you enter in the instructions that you get in your email and download the Givy app because you can't participate on the day of the gala unless you have the Givy app. We have an amazing donor who's going to match anything that you donate. So you can double your investment in spreading Ahimsa and creating a better world and a world filled with compassion. So now it is truly my privilege to introduce Saeed Duja an independent researcher, educationist with over 20 years in service in the field of school education. Traveled, he's worked, volunteered in more than 30 countries across the globe. A highly motivated, self-inspired individual driven by limitless passion for educational intervention and social renewal. Duja founded schools, guided and mentored educational houses of varied needs and challenges. He is currently pursuing his doctoral program in educational leadership. Duja is the founder and CEO of the Spring Schools Movement, Better People for a Better World. Welcome, Duja. <laughs> Can you hear me? It might be a bit of delay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can you hear me too? Yes, I can hear you now. So tell us what, tell us your story. What led you into the field of educational no. and opening the Springs Continental School? Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for inviting me. Good evening and good morning to all. Love and arms and the compassionate world. I'm so glad, I'm excited, and I'm privileged to be part of this inspired, compassionate community. Thanks so much. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you, Tito, and all the entire Lebanon's team, residents, all of you. So speaking of my story, starting in founding the school, I have founded the school 14 years back, back in 2006. Pursued meaning and, to, and my inner call to do something good for the world. Growing up in a school, you know, during my school years and college time, I saw many things like around me and in the world, which are not just right, you know, and which are not fair. And I saw my generation and the previous generation just accepting the way things are passively accepting and passing on to the other next generation. So this kind of incidents, like an observation, close observations, made me think, are we supposed to do the same? Passively observe things and become mute spectators and then pass on to the same, to the next generation, or are we supposed to do something? So these, kind of inner call I followed and finally the school was born in 2006. This is the, to make it short, yeah. That's absolutely, what is, what is the mission? And um, 
I'm going to introduce, Alexis is on here. Alexis Miller is our education and outreach manager. So Alexis, pop on and say hi real quickly. So Alexis is going to um, co-host with me tonight. Um, so what is the mission of the Springs Continental Schools? Speaking of the mission, actually, see, I believe strongly we are responsible to what we see. And there is a destiny factor, or in other words, we can name it like there's a karmic connection between why you as an individual, me as an individual, we happen to witness or see certain things in our lives. So, like I said before, you see so many unfair practices around you and living the value which we call, we are responsible for what we see. So we need to take up the, resp the responsibility and we need, we need to act. We call it in our Indian culture, karma. Mm -hmm. So your karma defines your individuality and your personality. So the mission of Spring School is to produce human harmonizers on earth, or in human education terms, to produce more solutionaries on earth to be instrumental in that process. This is what I'm trying to do. This is a mission. Thank you. Dijal, that is so beautiful. Human harmonizers? Yes, human harmonizers. I... Because we need to contribute. We need to contribute to, 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 to peace That's in right. every little aspect of our life, whatever we confront. This is what I meant by we are responsible for what we see. So what first sparked your interest in humane education? And can you tell us about your journey through implementing humane education in your school curriculum? Oh well, yeah, it's not just a single incident that sparked my, sparked the whole initiative. It was like collectively, like whatever I've been observing in my life, like, you know, whatever unfair practices, good and bad and things like that as an individual, as what the other speaker the other day, I, I heard in speaking, Professor Mark. Mm -hmm. I've heard him speaking like every life of an individual matters because we are alive. We are alive. Yeah. So I thought we actually cannot live a passive life or we cannot actually, we have to do something for what we see. So me, I have graduated, I should, I should, I, I usually say this, I have graduated from the university of my mom, who is just an elementary educated individual. From her, I have learned love, compassion, and most importantly, I have learned picking up the sacrifice. So school, founding the school is, I have picked up the responsibility and I have picked up the sacrifice. This is how I can explain that. So Deja, you we have talked before and you told me a story and, and when you were talking about Mark and him saying that every life mattered and how every life does make a huge difference and how speaking up and doing something is so important. You told me a story in Africa that you were in a village working about a gentleman where the two, um, two I mean, communities were pretty, yeah. Yes, the two tribes. Can you tell about that? Because I think it's such a powerful story about one individual and how they can make a huge difference. Yeah, that was one of the incidents that sparked the need in me to do something for the community. That goes like this. Now, there was a conflict between two neighbors, like you know, about, you know, we lived in a community whereby people didn't have enough money. It was a very poor country in the Central African continent 
and they had a quarrel about drinking water because they used to share water. Three families used to share water for which they share the bill on a monthly or whatever basis. Like I was living next door as a volunteer under the United Nations, working in the, under the Ministry of Education. So I was their neighbor. So their quarrel, you know, accumulated little by little, little by little. Then it became a big kind of a big issue. So that is a common practice in their tribe. They, they actually belong to three families, belong to three different tribes. And they have a practice when there is a conflict, there is a compromise talk. The elders and the family members, and they all accumulate. They come together. And when the, the, the crisis was escalating, when they're all about to go for like, you know, nobody wants to give up. One old gentleman stood up from one of the tribes and he took the responsibility. He said, I bear the cost, please don't fight. So that kind of human beings, you know, I'm connecting this with like, you know, when I started the, the school, you see, I compared a situation, a scenario some 30 years back. 30 years back in our country, we didn't have better roads as we have today. We didn't have better homes as we have today. We didn't have better, we didn't drive better cars as we drive today. We didn't have better shopping malls as we have today, but we had better human beings. So it's like, you know, as we say, like we have identified, we have seen the problem, but before more than anything else, we need better human beings. That's how the baby inside me was born. I have phrased it in a sentence, we need better people to make a better world. So that's what gave birth to the institution that I'm heading right now. And I'm so glad and I'm so happy. And um, I'm, I'm actually dancing with it. <laughs> I, I don't know if, if, so if I'm answering your question straight or what, you can prompt me, please. Yeah. So creating solutionaries, creating humans, harmonizing humans when you started yes. that idea for a school yes what what are you doing with the students like what how is your school different what are you doing and what kind of support and guidance are you providing the students to create students who are solutionaries to create people to to create people who want to take action and be responsible for what they see how do we do that, Duja? Yeah, it's a wonderful question. Actually, I like when I said the school was founded with this mission and vision in mind, like better people, we need better people. But how, how to bring in, I didn't have the idea of starting the school first, but how to, where to start. I have actually like brainstormed with my acquaintances and friends and, and intellectuals and things like this. Then I actually finally came up to this idea of starting school. That's when I, now when I reflect and think back, I feel I took the right decision, especially when I heard Zoe, as she listed, like, you know, she's listed the problems the world is facing today, one, two, three, four, five, five, six, and the list goes on. If at all there is any solution to the problems that we are facing today in this world, one key solution, I caught her, she said, it is cooling. It is cooling. So how do we achieve this goal of making them as solutionary or making them as the harmonized individuals in this world? Like, you know, it's not just education. Education is part of the process called raising a human being, raising a child. So I'm connecting this with like, you know, we have to be responsible for what we see. That means each one of us, like, you know, we have to take that responsibility. We have to see, we have to be, we need to be sincerely and genuinely interested in every young human being who is under our care. Be it a student, 
be it your own daughter or be it your own son or neighbor's son, everybody's child is our child. This is the kind of responsibility I'm talking about. So when we accept our children, the children of the world, as our own, because our lives matter, we are alive today, the baton is with us. It is our turn to act. It is not somebody's child. If a child is coming to me, to my school, to get educated, that means it has become my moral responsibility to do my best in the making of that young human being into an inspired, compassionate adult human being. So you have to do all that's possible. I shouldn't say within your capacity, I should say beyond your capacity. That should be the sweating that we need to do. So we, as you said, like, you know, how to achieve this goal, we integrate, we add in curricular content and daily experiences for children, whereby they experience compassionate practices. Visiting loving arms, part of the compassion, visiting, doing the compassion tour was one such an experience exercise or experience. So tell the, um, tell all our, our supporters that are listening right now about how you found Love and Arms and why you chose to go on compassion tours and how you and Alexis and Alexis, please chime in at any time about the compassion tours and like, what was it about Love and Arms and going on compassion tours? Um, made you decide, you know, to look us up. Yeah. I reached Love in Arms through a Psychology Today magazine, Zoe's interview with another interesting educational leader. I don't remember the name, but as I was reading through the interview, I the the, the word compassion took my attention. So, and compassion tour. Then I looked it up, I did my research. I wrote to Love in Arms and Loving Love in Arms was very prompt in replying and I got the answers from Alexis and then we took it from there. And it was a wonderful experience. I think I'm going coming back to it as your question. Yeah, right, yeah. It was a wonderful and experience to, for the entire community. Yeah. Yeah. To jump in, um, what you said you were looking for answers and you found them at Love and Arms, just to specify what kind of answers were you looking for? No, I actually, as I told you, you know, it's my, uh, I am trying, I'm using all my capacity, all my, my possible resources to expose my children, to introduce my children to the best human beings in the world genuine human beings and to exp expose them to the genuine good values so that they can learn from them. So it was like, I, I facilitated, I wanted to facilitate this kind of an experience for them from which they learn, they internalize certain values like compassion. So that was the first, the first and foremost objective of the whole program. But then later on after like the compassion tour, you know, we, we, we did the art project, we did a lot of uh, like, you know, they were, ex they feel like, you know, we, the entire Springs community is now, now part of Loving Arms community as well, yeah. So we have around 384 families here. And now the word is spreading to the, even to the next communities and things are like, you know, growing exponentially, I believe, yeah. So that was the experience, yeah. So um, we are going, I, want, I, I did bring the art of the students with me. So a little bit later on, I do wanna show everybody some of the art that the students produced, which is pretty amazing. And I'll have Alexis tell more about that as well. And just FYI, everyone, the children's art is in the silent auction and I can't wait to hear more about that. <laughs> um, so when our residents or any animals um, in our care 
they assess us mainly by one criterion, are we kind? Do we do this with our own species? Do you feel as, as well as um, non-humans do it with each other or with us? I, yes. Uh, I take it this way, like, you know, human beings actually by design, we are all kind. It is said that human beings are created in the most efficient and beautiful design possible. But the process called living, when we say living, the modern living has actually made us or we have deteriorated. We, we are not what we are meant to be. So the care towards animals can be a reverse process. So when you are compassionate and kind with your fellow animal, non-human animal, and obviously to be kind with your own species, it is very much in the design. So you get actually the double impact that way. This is how I take it personally. So if you, you, you are kind and you're compassionate with the entire existence, you know, this is the kind of value that we, we, we try to achieve through the animal care and the love towards the animals. We're all in this together. Thank what you. We do Thank to you. one, we do to ourselves. Um, Alexis, tell us more about how the art program and the compassion tours um, and what um, Love and Arms and the schools, what you worked on together. Yeah, um, it was my pleasure working with Duja and his community on um, basically inspiring empathy in animals, um, which seemed to be already there um, for the most part. Um, so maybe we just help them along the way a little on their journey. As you, as you mentioned, it really takes a village. It takes multiple individuals to, to um, provide that support for young and growing minds. Um, and animals really help with that. And um, there have been studies that have shown um, the link between violence against people and violence against animals. And I believe there's a quote that says, um, one of the worst things that can happen to a child is a child harming an animal and getting away with it. So I think I really agree with what Duja said. We, as children, we're all, um, we're all, you know, born with this love for animals and it comes very easily to us and we come into this world with compassion but there are systems in this world that really suppress that so it's important to have um, leaders of the community like Duja um, who are really and like Love in Arms who are really trying to foster um, that that compassion that is there in children we don't want to let that go we want to encourage it we want to feed it and um, I think meeting, having them go on the compassion tour and meet, we also did the connect and the compassion tour. So we went through multiple grades of Duja's school. So we had kindergarten up to um, 18 year olds and of course provided information that was appropriate for that age group. And for the young students, really just allowing them to connect with our animals um, virtually. But I think a great way to do that, that we do at Love and Arms is through storytelling. So telling the stories of our rescued individuals and letting um, the students ask, then ask questions and inquire more about, um, well, who are these individuals and where, I feel like we get a lot of questions that are very, um like uh personal and they want to know like where they sleep and what they eat and you know all these all these very 
intimate um, things about them. They're interested in those individuals and in their lives. Um, and then as we worked with the older students, we started talking about the systems that, um, you know, in solutionary learning, you learn about where you can really critically think about how, where these animals are coming from and the systems that were contributing to when we purchased their bodies um, at a grocery store, um, including, you know, environmental issues, human rights issues, um, and of course, issues of animals. So there, you know, as we were saying before, everything is interconnected and just allowing students to also ask questions and inquire about that as much as as much as they could. Um, so we started with that and doing the tours and then moved on to, I think we we really came to the art project because Duja was sending me all of these videos and all of these photos of his community there. And um, and even when we were on some of the tours with the younger kids, we had some of the kids sing to our animals. So music and art um, seem to be very prevalent in Duja's community and in the spring school. Duja. So, oh, I was just going to have to tell um, Duja. Can you tell us more about the responses from the tours and from Alexis and why you are from the students and your community and why you decided to do more beyond the compassion tours? Oh, yes. Uh, that's actually basically what we need is we need role models. We need living examples, actually. So we find, uh, along with the residents at the Lavinams, and uh, we found amazing human beings there who have committed their time and life and money, whatever resources they are, they are gifted with for the cause of good, for the good cause and for for bringing some positive changes in this world. So I really wanted to expand, to, to, to maintain this relationship between these two communities so that the young promising human beings, they have something, they have something more to do in their, in their life in the future, uh, learning from us because you know, if, if at all we are lit, from another light and we have to light these again in other lives. This has to be a chain. So I look at this opportunity connecting with and doing more projects and more, more activities with Love and Arms and the entire compassionate communities around the world to, 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 to show them as an example, we are doing our part. And now we are preparing you to do your part when it's time for you. So this is part of the part of the raising aspect of education. So, so I would, yeah, I would love to have a long-term association with Love and Arms and Sprint communities. Yeah, we would love that as well. Alexis, would you like to tell about the art project? And I can hold up some of the students' work while you're talking about it, or I'll have to. Yeah, sure. Um, sorry, I got a little too into the tours. I got excited yeah, about them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but wow. yes, the art project um, was absolutely such an amazing experience for, for me. And I hope it was an amazing experience for the students as well. So basically, um, the art project, yes, this is one of the works of art uh, that one of the students made and um, it was a service art project so it's providing a service for the animals which I think is really empowering for the students because um, this way they know that they're doing something to help farmed animals and they can really feel good about that um, and they can really feel good about um, you know their their creativeness their creative spirit let that shine and um, it was just a really cool collaborative project and the the um, guidelines around the project were to, um, we did a visualization and to think about what would a world look like if Ahimsa was applied to farmed animals. Um, and then 
to try and illustrate what that world would look like. And the students came up with some absolute beautiful work. I love this one. Uh, this is this is a very beautiful one. This is one of a saint. The student said there's a saint in this picture, um, kind of protecting a, a cow that is that is laying down right next to him. Um, and I think that that really beautifully illustrates, you know, this this idea of protection. And this student is helping with this protection for farmed animals and um, in in creating a better world for them. So the students worked really, really hard on this project. Um, during this project, we went through um, a uh, kind of a journey. It was a, like a three-day journey. And we started by talking about other activists who make art and do activism through their artwork. So there are many different ways to speak for animals and to, and to use your voice. And this is just one of them. Um, and I'm so glad we went this route because these students are, they came up with such beautiful work, um, not just beautiful concepts, but also um, beautiful uh, technique. This one was done by one of the teachers and um, we have this one on our website actually uh, on our page where we're actually hosting an art poster contest right now for October 2nd. Um, and uh, for a world day for farmed animals. Uh, that one, I really liked that one because it was a print and this student felt comfortable enough to really explore. She said she had never tried printmaking before, um, but she decided to try it and it turned out beautifully. Um, so, so yeah, we talked, so during this kind of exploration, we talked a lot about um, we looked at other artists who are speaking through their artwork for farmed animals or for the environment or for a cause um, and talked about how that can really um, make, an, make an impact on people. And one of the things that we talk about at Love and Arms especially is we talk about inspiring change. And I think art um, really allows for that inspiration to happen. So not um, not just educating, um, but but really inspiring it. And I think students, when they when they do a project like this and they get involved and they get crafty and they're making something, um, it really helps the message resonate with with them. And I mean, you can see it in their work. Like one of the works that you pulled up had a message of not um, friends, not food, which I had never even mentioned to them. And we hadn't talked about, like said that specifically, but um, you know, it just kind of showed, I was really blown away just by how hard these kids worked and um, how, how passionate they were. Yeah, that's the one, um, how passionate they were about the subject matter and wanting to to be part of the change and to do something and to act and to help Love in Arms in our mission. And I mean, you know, people learn better when you care about them. And that is very prominent in Duja's community. And I think it's really because, you know, Duja is such a caring leader in his community. And that just, um, is contagious to his community and to his students and that you can see that they are developing empathy and they're developing, um, you know, these, these moral ideas to be solutionaries and to be uh, change makers for the world. And um, I'm really glad that they were able to come to Love in Arms and meet our residents, our rescued farmed animals and see, you know, what what is really going on with farmed animals today and what they can do to um, be a part of that change for farmed animals and Alexis. create a world of Ahimsa. Yes. Um, so okay. everybody, so we we showed the art projects and then I'm gonna ask you a few questions, but tell everybody, what do they get when they help support in the silent auction, the students artwork? What comes with those projects? So they get the original design and what else? Mm. 
Yes, so um, what we did with the student work is because it was so beautiful, we didn't want just one of them. We want to make multiples. Um, so what we did, the students created their work and on the back of their work, they, were, they wrote their bios and then they wrote their artist statements, um, which is telling a little bit about them and about what their work is about. And so we turned that into greeting cards and the cards have the work on the front of the card and then the student's bio and artist statement on the back of the card. And hopefully this will help you know, spread the message. So whoever purchases these cards, I already bid it on all of them because <laughs> I want them all but um they're so beautiful and whoever you know wins the bid um will have not only that original artwork that was sent all the way from India um to make it to our gala but also greeting cards so we can hopefully pass on this message of Ahimsa that the students so beautifully created. Dusha. Would you say that the residents of Love and Arms has helped your students expand their circle of empathy and what other types of, of things, like what is it about animals that help children connect and expand their circle of empathy? Uh, like I said before, like, you know, the connection, but the connecting with the animals definitely certainly like makes anyone connect anyone kind and compassionate. So if we can develop that habit in, in the early ages, like, you know, so most of the, like, you know, most of the homes in India, we used to have our animals at home. But these days it's disappearing, unfortunately. There is no connection. Children are like, even in the villages, like, you know, even the rural, very rural, uh, like villages, people are now, now actually, like, it's like, you know, at the heart of a village, people are trying to practice urbanized lifestyle. They live as if they live in New York City. You know, closed doors and air conditioners, and then you know, you, you don't have an access and you don't, you're not connected with the rest of the existence. So now schools like us, we we actually are 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 we have a, a methodology called anchored instructional methodology, in which by which like raising animals and farming is two of the many anchors that we use as you know it is actually a, an overarching project that we do from like you know from the beginning of the school year to the end of the school year and it gets continued so our our, our uh, sincere effort is to connect to really connect to really, like our children with the animals and the non-human world so that they, they develop into a balanced human being so that they can understand the problems of the environment and the, the fellow animals and the rest. So rest of life. So connecting with the animal care at Lavinans and things like that, you know, it was actually a first kind, first of its kind experience for our children because they never thought, you know, so many children actually spoke to me even after the the compassion tools that we had and the, 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 the interactions that we had with them, they, they, they were actually like so surprised and like, you know, so much cruelty is happening towards animals. It was actually, they, they actually came to know about it through the interactions with Alexis and also the literature that we provided part of the compassion tool prior to the tour and after, after the tour with some, some figures and facts about the animal cruelties and what's happening in the meat and dairy industries and what are the food choices, you know. So just certainly this experience has actually cured or made it more, it helped very much towards their becoming a solutionary. This is what I should say, yeah. So becoming solutionary, and, and there's so many things that just, every choice that we make every day by whatever product that we buy right. it is a vote for compassion or exactly. cruelty. Yeah. Yes. 
So we, we, we have actually uh, so many things like every decision, every choices that we make, we actually lead by example. You know, if you visit our school physically, you will experience that. I'm actually not like, you know, I cannot put everything into words right now because see, you see every decision, even every small little thing that we do, we actually do make the decisions to the best of our knowledge so that it's it's actually a solutionary decision. So we bring this into our daily conversations and interactions, like, you know, see why we do what we do, why we do what we do. This is the kind of check that we keep in on a daily basis, not uh, after end of 10 years or five years. Like that. So there is a conscious effort in every every participating human being in our school community to be like, you know, to be consciously making their choices on a daily basis to the best of their knowledge. And we need to upgrade our knowledge on a continuous basis. This is like, you know, this is how we proceed. What I, I love about children is oftentimes they learn something at school, then they go home. Yeah, and uh, they get reversed. Yeah. <laughs> they demand yeah, it's, a, it's, it's actually a programming, deprogramming process. Right. Certainly true. But uh, I, I believe like, you know, imitation, the, the, the journey of, journey of reaching or acquiring knowledge is like from imitation to internalization. That's right. And what about so, if you had uh, parents come back and, and talk with you about um, their, what their children have learned with the animals or the impact that they've had? Like, I'm sure your community is close knit. How have they accepted some of the things that the children have been learning Yes, the, actually, to be very honest with you, actually, it's not that uh, a, a quick process. Mm -hmm. It's slow, honestly. So because, you know, when we speak, they all, everybody likes these ideas. Right. We, we have so many preachers around, but we have very few doers and practitioners. So this is actually a slow process, but I see positive movement in that direction. Like, you know, that is actually, the invitation is happening and people are attracted to this. So we need actually, you know, why, why we don't have so many takers or buyers for these kind of ideas is because it's, it's not that easy, especially in the beginning, mm -hmm. to make the right choices because we are all habituated or we are all living a life that is designed for us. You know, we don't make our own, our own decisions, actually. Decisions are made for us. We just go through that. So to reverse that, to stop and think and reverse those decisions, it takes time. It's a slow process, I should say, but it's happening. I can see there is hope. There yeah. is a way of hope, yes, yes. And our are that hope. And that's where, you know, people like, especially the vast majority, I, I, I actually strongly believe that the vast majority of the human population are like, you know, they follow what the elite is doing. When we say speak of elite, like, you know, what is the socially elite or financially elite is doing. So it's like, you know, people copy others, right? So we need actually, that's why I actually mentioned this when we had a talk the other day. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm trying to make, teach authentic generosity to the affluent class. So that's, that's so that change is fast and change is possible. And the, the majority of the, we can maybe call it all the followers, like, you know, they fall in place automatically. So the leadership needs to change. Yeah. As, yes. So this is why we need more humane leaders now than anything else. So I'm going to um, let people, please feel free to put questions in the, um, in the chat and ask Duja or come on, just, I don't think, feel free to go ahead. We have 13 people. Feel free to go ahead and unmic and ask Duja directly um, because I'm sure he would love to answer your questions. Yes, prompt me please, thank you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell me how, um, while people are thinking about what kinds of questions they might want to ask you, 
how does being in service and teaching, it sounds like that's what you're like, you're teaching students to, to serve, to look at what's going on and to realize they have to be responsible for taking action. What are some ways that you do that within your school? Yeah. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Like, you know, find joyful service is a mantra. I hope you understand mantra. The yeah. Find joy to service is a mantra that we keep chanting. Yes. Find yes. joy to service. Even however small uh, a service that you do, that brings you joy. And we also teach them like the only, like, you know, um, we have a mission song actually that we sing that every morning together in a circle. One of the line in the song says that each good deed sets us free. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Sure, however small the good deed is. So we, we actually need to, what children need is role models, living examples. They look at you. They actually don't really look at you. I mean, listen, hear your words, actually. Words can be made, but they look at you, what you do, what, what is like, you know, me, I am sitting in this room. This is my office room where I'm sitting now. And my home is very close by, just a uh, five minutes drive. And uh, like, and I'm sitting here for the past 14 years. I started with 22 students on roll. And uh, I'm pretty happy. So to lead something in front, from the front, and like you have to make yourself available. So my children, one child is watching me for 12 years. From age four, she or he walks with me, I carry them, you know, at age four. Now they are age 14 or 16, you know? So they are young, young adults. So like, it's a process. So you have to be available. You have to be available for them as an example. So whether you practice what you preach or not. So this way, actually, I think we can influence them and we also upgrade our knowledge, our expertise and everything. And we give them, we, we actually pursue more knowledge and excellence. And we, we provide, like the dad brings home the best for their children. So I, I actually assume I'm, I, I'm, I'm the God appointed dad for these many children, whoever knocks at my door. So whoever knocks at my door. Yeah. I Deja, I am so, so inspired by how you sought out, like you saw compassion cures and you sought that out. Like you didn't, you acted. Like you went after it to provide your students these experiences. And um, Leif asked one of the questions. Um, this is his question, which is a really great one. Were these interactions with the animals a new thing or do some of these kids have non-humans in their homes? And also do shelters and rescues exist in your area? Yeah, yeah, I saw the question in the chat. All right, good. So the shelters and rescue homes are not very common in our area. Actually in our area, there are none, but in India, there are a few. And, uh, and the interactions with the animals, actually we have our own animal, like we raise animals, we raise animals actually especially cows and gods in our school. But, you know, it just like, you know, we have like, you know, we, we, we don't keep them throughout the year in the school. We have a shelter for them. They walk around in the school. And I think I have shared a couple of pictures with Alexis before, if I'm not like, yeah. And like, you know, they feed them. This is part of the school experience, like, because they don't have this experience at home. So we are bringing that experience in the school. And be, because as, as I told you before, uh, maybe some 10, 20 years back, we all had animals at home. So that interaction and connection was missing. And we are trying to feed that gap now by bringing animals to school and they are their friends. They walk around, they play around, they, they feed them. 
So this is how we try to, to fill the gap. And now the experience of visiting Lavinam's actually, it is just like, you know, yeah, the, the hype is coming up, like the love towards animals. And me personally, I'll tell you, this is my personal experience. After seeing Tito and all the Lavinam's uh, residents, like now I started stopping my car while driving when I see a stray dog in the streets and, and trying to pay attention to give something. To, what I'm thinking, how can I be helpful to them? This is at my personal level. This is the influence that I had from, from the, and also like, you know, our school is totally vegetarian, but our place is totally like, you know, meat eating community, majority. And there is actually now there's a shift among the children, like they go home and demand school food. <laughs> they want vegetarian food. So I'm so glad to hear that. So there is some transformation is happening. As I said, it's not that fast, but it's slow, but it is for sure change is happening. It's definitely, um, we're all on a journey and supporting, you know, each other in a compassionate way to make progress on that journey is important. Um, yes. And so you're mostly in a community where, and I think that mostly that um, the facts, like you said, they're, they're hidden from them, right? So yeah. we don't, uh, most, a lot of students don't even know that hamburger comes from a cow like you know so they think it's, it's from, right it's packaged and they have no idea yeah. where it comes yeah. from um so it's really important work um to enlighten and to tell them to give them those choices those compassionate choices yes very much so we are um so thrilled um to have met this um that you contacted us and that we have this partnership with you to help create yes. a more compassionate world how many people did you say we have in india to, to <laughs> was it Sorry? one you were talking uh we were talking you have 1.3 billion is that correct uh, yes. <laughs> right 1.3 billion yes yes that is a huge potential here this is Right, and especially I think uh, as for the statistics, like India has the the highest number of young human beings in the world. Wow. So that means this contributes the world for tomorrow. And working with this young human beings, it's actually worth the work. We need to focus. We need to focus. We need more earthen citizens, more more humane citizens in this world beyond borders and so multiplying um our efforts in a yes effective very way much. very much yes we need we need to compete each other we need to push each other we need to work together in collaboration yes we need more yes. action and how we found ourselves like again i'm telling you karmically we are connected cosmically we are connected there is nothing, nothing happens without a reason. So I believe strongly in that. And then we need to help each other. Beyond words, we need more actions because we have yeah. enough creatures in the world and yeah. we have few doers in the world. I, I, I wanted to be a doer than a preacher. I, I took the first break, like, you know, when I conceived this idea, I, I, I usually say that I became pregnant, like, you know, I wanted to do something and then you know, the idea, the, idea the, concept, the, the, concept, the concept that we need better human beings in this world. At the age of 34, I founded the school. But this idea was within me much earlier, much earlier. We should do something. We should pursue something meaning before I even could articulate what exactly I'm trying to do. So, and uh, later in 2013 or 14, I think I first heard Zoe speak them articulating beautifully all these things like you know, I felt like I, I found my place I found my teacher I can now if you ask me what's the mission of the school I say it's a mission mogul most goodly sound 
Yes, in one word. You know, with, with the permission from Joe, we have like decided to declare Spring School the first solutionary school in India. So we are going ahead with that, and along with Joe. Yes. I, you know, and and Duja, it's so you're right. Like I do feel like it's a karmic connection too. So how interesting is it that COVID nineteen, a global pandemic which is caused by the mistreatment of animals by people and diseases oh. passing on to people caused us to meet up because like we would have never yes. we were doing everything in person. So everything went global online together and we right. had to, right. you were taking something right. online. So this global, exactly. yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had this opportunity because COVID 19 situations like every everything is virtual and everyone is online yeah right so creating more good for all the non-humans out there um i think that now we realize that we can have a global impact um wherever we're at like you can have yes. a global impact we can have a global impact that our impact doesn't uh, we're not limited to our physical presence of, of Erie, Colorado, or in, in your town in India. Chocolate with you, right. So I am excited about what we have in the future. Does anybody have any questions? Because Duja is an amazing individual, and we will be creating all kinds of solutions with the children in India and with the children throughout the world. Duja, you have three schools. So tell yeah. everybody where your three schools are at. Yeah, it's actually within 50 kilometers uh, within my first school. Like, you know, it's everything is in the state of Kerala. Oh, sorry, the third school is in another country in, in, the, in the Middle East. Two schools are in within my 50 kilometers range. And then, yeah. But and I mentor other, even the public schools, you know, I give my service to whoever. I, I tell people, use me, call me. I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is my this is my mission, personal mission. Because you know, we whatever talent that we have, it will die with us for sure if we don't use it. And any community, any society to to be smarter, I think we should identify the resources there within your community. And it can even use the word squeeze that in, like use that for the good of the next generation. Juju, why is it so important right now? Why do you feel, why is it so important? Like, I feel there's a sense of urgency about what our work is and what we're doing. Why yeah. is that? Do you, and I know you feel it too. Why is it urgent that we make a difference in these young people's lives today? Because I, I feel that, you know, there is this, the, the, uh, compared to the earlier generation and the present current generation, the biggest crisis is like, you know, as you say, our scriptures tell us there are seven deadly sins. There's one sin that even above the seven deadly sins is that is distraction. So we are, we are terribly distracted. So here is where we need guidance. We need enlightenment. We need someone to show the path. That puts them on track. So this is what I think about that. It is so true. We are so distracted that we're not seeing what's actually happening. Yeah, so if there is no right intervention at the right time, yeah, it can be disastrous. The output can be disastrous. But we have hope because there are people like you and like love and arts. <laughs> yes, there is hope and hope is the hope, definitely, yeah. certainly. Yes. Any further hope is in our children. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Alexa. Future generations that we can teach. For sure. Yes. Alexis, did you have any quotes from the students that you wanted to share? I could probably actually read maybe a back, but as we end this and have any last final. I don't have any that are um, that I picked out or in front of me, but I do remember one of the students, Duju, you were talking about enlightenment 
and one of the students, you know, describing her experience with love and arms and then saying my body is full of enlightenment and like something along the lines of like a sense of compassion and that was really beautiful to hear because that's exactly what we're I think we're both um, the spring school and love and arms is trying to do is provide you know help guide those people those young people to really feel enlightened feel empowered um, and feel compassionate and and non-human animals is really, um, you know, just the start. Uh, like I was saying earlier, non-human animals, um, you know, people who are kind to non-humans are also kind to humans. So, um, you know, if we can start there with animals, then, um, you know, the future is bright. So this young lady said, I realized how each life of an animal matters here just like humans, they also have their own space in this world. Here, I got to see the intimacy between them and how hard people at Love and Arms are trying to make sure that no animal is left behind in danger, creating a sustainable future. At Springs, I'm elated now that we're also a part of it and that we are on a mission for Ahimsa for Animals. Yep. It's beautiful. You have some amazing students and with your students. Yes, we have, we have. That is, as you said, that is hope. Certainly that is hope. Duja, thank you so much. Would you like to leave us with any parting words? I'm so grateful for you and Alexis and our partner. Yes, and my parting word would be, I love you <laughs> and let's keep the job together let's compete each other for good let's work in collaboration we love you thank too you. I'm, thank I'm available thank you so much thank, thank you so you. much bye-bye bye-bye thank you